Welcome to the System Simplified Podcast, where we feature top leaders who share stories on how to successfully systemize a business. Now, let's get started with the show. Hello, I'm Dick Levitt here, the host of the System Simplified Podcast, where our feature top founders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders about systematizing a business. And today's episode is being brought to you by Business Success Consulting Group, where we create document, optimize, and implement processes and procedures so businesses can grow and thrive. And today's guest is Darcy Juarez. Hi, Darcy. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. You are very welcome. Thank you for being a guest on this podcast. And I think we need to give a big shout out to Lisa Caro for in- introducing us. And Lisa has been a guest on this podcast as well. So I'm going to include the wonderful episode that I did with Lisa on the show notes for this episode so people can check it out as well. Great. And Darcy, let's uh, let's start with you. You are a, an author, a speaker, a marketer, and we're going to talk about a topic that is very much um, of interest to me. It's about direct marketing and it's for about direct marketing for non-direct marketers. Mm. So I have a lot of questions and we're going to discuss that and we're going to show our listeners how can they use, basically open their eyes to a new way of marketing, a different way of marketing. But before yeah. we start with that, please tell us more about yourself. How did you get started on this journey of marketing and how did it get you to where you are today? Oh, funny story, of course, right? Um, Like probably most people, I did not start off uh, this way. I actually started my, I graduated, I I went to college and played volleyball. So that was my first focus. And then um, I graduated with a degree in parks and rec, uh, but very quickly discovered that I did not enjoy that. And I fell into marketing, literally fell into it on accident, fell into Dan Kennedy and uh, got thrown into the deep end. And so I started reading all the books. I started listening to courses. I started paying attention to uh, other successful entrepreneurs and really kind of just fell in love with marketing. But the the fun thing that I think it's, it's going to be so much fun to talk about on, on this podcast is I fell in love with the systems. I Because what happened is the the very first job that I started learning direct marketing, there were you know three people in the company. And so if you wanted to take a day off, if you needed to go on vacation, like something had, your job had to keep happening, had to keep going. And so I had to figure out ways in which I could do that. So I've, I figured out ways in which I replicate myself while I'm gone. And so money is still coming into the business. Uh, new leads are coming into the business. People are becoming clients all while I'm on vacation. I had a CFO one time tell me I should take more vacations. Because during the timeframes when I was gone, all these things would surge. And when he finally started to put it together, he asked me, what was happening those weeks? And I go, I don't know. I was on vacation. And uh, and I like smirked to myself and thought, no, actually, I'd set up the entire system. So all of this was happening while I was gone. So nobody could say anything about how long I was gone for because... Clients were coming in, money was coming in. And so that's, it's my favorite part of what we're going to talk about today is the system. So I'm super excited. I'm excited as well. Absolutely. Okay. So let's talk about direct marketing. You know, you call the name of your book is direct marketing for non-market, non-direct marketers. Yes. Let's define direct marketing first. Yes. So it's, it can be as simple as simply defined as If we are trying to get a response, if we want somebody to do something, we are directly asking them to do something. And that's the biggest mistake that most business owners make is that they don't ask somebody to do something. So if we are in the business of directly soliciting orders, if we are in the business of directly getting leads into our business, we are in a direct marketing business. Um, But we think we're a non-direct marketing business business, hence the title. Um, And so really just about every business, it should be a direct marketing business, should be directly soliciting for the response that they want. Okay. So basically what you were saying is direct marketing is specifically soliciting for the response and non-direct marketing. What would you, like, give me an example of a non-direct, what you call a non-direct marketing. 
So we call that brand building. That's things like Coca-Cola, Budweiser, where it's many of the Super Bowl commercials, where at the end of this, we might think the commercial was cute, and, but we can't remember exactly who it was for. We might remember it was a beer commercial, but we don't remember who it was for. Um, because at the end of it, there is no direct solicitation for that. And the thing that they don't know is they can't come back and say, gee, by running that specific ad, by putting an ad in that newspaper or in that magazine or on that TV show, we know how many new customers we got from it. And us as business owners, it's kind of something we need to know. We need to know that the marketing that we are doing is providing, is giving us new clients, is giving us money, is giving us leads. And so that's kind of the big switch. And when we make that switch, the marketing and the creation of systems for your marketing becomes so much easier. Absolutely. So basically, give me an example of a business that is he's using direct marketing. Uh, well, it the ones that we is in just about every industry, right? And, and uh, we Let's work. Pick with, one. Let's pick one that you work yeah. with, and maybe you can explain with an example the transformation of what they were doing before that was not direct marketing, sure. and what was the result after transforming them to direct marketing. Okay. So one that comes to the top of my mind, um, uh, we have a member who, uh, he's an, he was an insurance agent, but what he did then, and so he was making about $50,000 a year. And I know that's smaller for than, than your kind of average, but you can uh, take this to an agency, right? We can take this upstream. We can go uh, any which way direction with it, but he was making about $50,000 a year. And he switched his business. And so he was following what everybody else was doing, the way every other insurance agency and agent kind of advertised, right? I'm going to get my name out there. I'm going to tell people I work for Allstate and everybody's going to come to me. And that didn't happen. Doesn't happen. And so he made that switch to direct marketing. And he went from $50,000 a year to making $500,000 a year. He went from working like 60 hours a week to working 10 hours a week, making 10 times the amount of money for what is that 10 times less the amount of time spent doing it. Right. So he just became, and he created these, he creates incredible marketing systems that kind of do this. That's what allows him then to only work 10 hours. And either you can work those 10 hours or you can take those other 30 hours a week and think about what else we can do for our business. If we had an extra 30 hours a week to focus on our operations, to focus on our systems, to focus on all of that other stuff. Um, and so, okay, good. so I'm going to stop you here. I think it's a great example. Okay. So what was he doing before? So you said he, like, how was he advertising before? Let's talk about that. It was simply putting a name out there, right? My name is oh, John Smith. Networking events. No. At a networking event, running ads that are, I'm John Smith and I, you know, I'm your local Allstate agent and you should come talk to me. Maybe they added that you should come talk to me, right? But there was not a lot of stuff. What he switched to then was marketing for the customer. So what he did is he did a deep dive to figure out exactly who his customer was, what they were. So he could he could tell you what, what they look like, what they think, what their biggest problems are, what their biggest challenges are, where they're at. He knows exactly where they're at in the process. And so for him, he decided he he became a Medicare specialist. So the only the only insurance that he sells are the Medicare policies, which also means he can't charge for his services. You can't, your, your insurance agent can't charge you for your services. So on top of this, he can't raise his rates. He can't change his prices. He can't do any of that. So he started marketing directly for his customer. He started talking to people before they were ready. And his entire business is now built around educating people to make their best Medicare decision for them. And they come from as far away as they can come to reach him because they want to work with him. He made himself an expert. He made himself an authority. He wrote a book. He did all of these things. He's on podcasts. He's on interviews. He's on TV. He's on all of these things to be this expert. And all he offers is his free services. He makes all of his money then by the insurance policies that he writes. Um, so that's one. Uh, another one, we have a physical therapist. Very, very- yes, I have another question just so yeah. we can wrap up on this one because I'm fascinated by it. Okay. So when you said that he now started doing direct marketing, maybe he, you mean that he directed his efforts, he identified his ide his um, ideal client, I guess. Yes. He niched, I mean, he basically found a niche. So it's not generic. He just don't just start spreading the communication all over, but it was a very specifically niched um, area. Yep. He, was, he identified what the message is that, that those people needed and wanted. 
Yep. And then he started crafting those messages and figure out what, um, like what avenues can he actually reach them? Yep. And his message was very specific, very direct. Yep. And his message changed then to a, um, basically before you make a decision about Medicare, there's this information you need to know. And so I'm going to provide you with all that information. And so the direct marketing portion of that too is a very specific ask so that he can monitor and measure how many people reply to that, how many people respond to those messages that he has going out there, where before it was a, I'm John Smith, I'm your Allstate agent, here's my phone number, right? And so now these are very specific offers that people are asking about, coming in for and requesting so he can track them, he can measure them. So he knows now the the advert that is at the local chiropractor, right? Because the local chiropractor has his customer. They're going in there. And so once he identified his customer, he then could identify the places that those customers go, that they are already at. And he could insert himself into that flow of where they already are. Instead of trying to fight an uphill battle or fight the, the currents, right? Go with them. And so he inserted himself in these places where his customers already are. And so then he measures it. He knows how many come from the local chiropractor. He knows how many come from the chamber of commerce. He knows how many come from this TV ad versus this newspaper article versus this post on Facebook. He knows where every one of those come from so that he can expand the winners and he can test and change the the losers so yes i love that i think it's great so it's really a matter of also you know because i as you were thinking as you were talking i was thinking you know if you want to deal if you deal with referral partners if you have a very specific offer then your referral partners can be truly your referral partners and work with you because every time that they will hear from their patients, their clients, their customers that need, they will think of you as opposed to this wide umbrella that you are not always going to come um, to their mind. So I think it's great. I think it's a great example. Yeah. And, you know, on speaking of referrals, one of the things like with re the, the biggest mistake that that gets made with referrals is expecting the referral source to be your sales source. And that's like the worst thing we can do because then they've got, they can't sell your business better than you can, but that's what we like think is going to happen. And so with your referral sources, if you create a system, a referral system, if you create a way by which they're not referring to you to do business, they're referring to you for information and your expertise. So now if that chiropractor has somebody who's complaining about Medicare or talking about all this stuff or like checking on what their Medicare benefits are gonna be once they switch to, Med you know, that he can simply say, or she can simply say, oh, you know, hey, this local insurance agent has written a book that walks you through everything you need to know to make sure your chiropractic co is covered as you make that switch over to Medicare. So now he's he's not, he or she is not asking that refer or referral person to have to do business immediately, but instead, hey, here's an avenue by which, and then what happens is they come over into your world. Um, and so they're now there where you can nurture them, where you can work with them, where you can sell them on your services. And so it's this, it's this small thing, but, um, you know, the, it's every, huge, it's huge. It's I completely huge. understand exactly. that. And I agree with you. It is basically, you are giving your referral partners, um, a resource that that makes them more valuable because they yep. cannot answer the question but still they want to answer the question of their patients or customers or clients. And now it actually directing them to an expert. And if you conduct your sales cycle correctly and you, you don't immediately start selling, but you actually truly deliver as an expert, then your referral sources feel valuable. You are valuable to the customer or the patient and they will go with you if they wanted to, you know, but it's, it increases the chances. So I, I love that. Yep. And now I have a question on the systems, but you were going to actually tell me another example with a the physical therapy. So I want to hear about that. Oh yeah. A physical, you know what, actually I'm going to switch it. I'm going to switch it to another one that is a bigger business. Um, and this was in a coaching and consulting business. Um, and so we took that, I took that business from probably about 2 million to about 6 million. 
by putting these marketing systems in place. And the thing is, it's the exact same systems that this that this insurance agent put in place. It is creating the direct marketing for it. So when we look at fifty thousand dollars, or you know, two million, or five million, or ten million, I have another uh, client that I worked with that they were up to a thirty million dollar uh, coaching business, right? But the the so let's talk we... about a $2 million coaching business. Okay. What were they doing before? What was the indirect marketing or the non-existence direct marketing? Yeah. So when I got in there, uh, I got back into that business, they were using a brochure. And the funny thing is that brochure cost about, uh, I think it was about $8 to create. Um, and the brochure basically said the same thing that I, the example that I use, I'm John Smith and I'm with Allstate agent. This was, I'm, you know, Jane Smith and I, teach people to do X, Y, and Z. And uh, a lot of pictures and, you know, but no direct calls to action. No direct, here's exactly how I'm going to help your business. Or if you are this person, we are a fit for you. And so what I did in that business is I instantly went in and because it was coaching and consulting, because what they were trying to express was uh, took needed a lot of time to explain because what they were trying to do is, is change the way a dentist approached and grew their entire business. And that can't be done in 140 characters or less in a tweet or in a, a Facebook post, right? So um, I went and I wrote the book for it. So I wrote a 150 page book that explained their process. Here's a five-step process we use to grow dental practices. Here's the results we've done for this client, this client, this client, right? And I started then using that book as the source of everything. So every Every Facebook we every Facebook post, every Facebook ad, every LinkedIn, every speaking engagement we were at, every podcast they were on, everything we did, they offered this book to a specific dentist. So they were able to exactly say who this was right for. And if you if you fit this criteria, this book explains exactly what you need to do. And then what would happen is people would come in and bring that book and say, I want, how do you do this for me? And that we knew was a slam dunk. This is going to be an easy case. They want us, they're asking us to do something for them. They're asking to hire us to do this. Um, and so- That's fascinating. So now I have a question. Yeah. Okay, so you wrote the book, which is amazing. How did you then distribute the book? Because it's one thing to write the book, but then what do you do with the book? So we created a system, a marketing system by which people asked us for the book. And then we, uh, we used to ask us like, you know, in terms of like, they went, you, you put yourself out there, like you found out where dentists hang out and then they wanted Correct. the books. Correct. Yeah. So we would run ads, um, in places where we knew dentists were hanging out. We would go speak at places that dental conventions, dent you know, things in which they were all going to be at. We would sponsor booths at those places so that we could get in front of these people. Um, we would get on podcasts. We would be interviewed by top experts in the dental field who all did this. We would work with celebrity clients. We'd work with cachet clients, let's say. We'd do everything possible to find the cachet clients so that when somebody heard, hey, they worked with this company, then they would want to work with us as well too. And so anytime somebody asked for information, they were immediately sent not only the book, but we we actually created a package that went with the book. So when the book went out, what they were asking us for, also what went out was a, our marketing material. Everything was, you can call it like a slippery slope or a well-designed process by which if you get this, then we want them doing this. If they haven't done that by a certain amount of time, then this happens, right? So if they don't call us to schedule an appointment via the, the campaign we created with the goal of scheduling an appointment, then they're going to be invited to a webinar. And on that webinar, we're going to sell them to an appointment, right? Everything led back to the appointment. They're going to receive our newsletter, our physical newsletter that we're going to mail out. So we stay in front of them month after month after month. That newsletter, the goal of that is schedule an appointment. Everything featured in that newsletter were people succeeding using the five-step process uh, described in the book. So you saw person after person after person. And if you read all of their stories, they all were doing the same process. So it kept reiterating the process in which we were selling them on until they would say yes. And so everything we designed went for two things. One, get the book. Two, schedule an appointment with us. Three, become a client. And so instead of trying to go all over the board, 
we really focused in on those three steps. But underneath those three steps was a spider web of stuff that moved them to those steps. That's fascinating. But again, you were talking about an $8 brochure, but this sounds like it's much more expensive to actually- oh, Great question, right? That's why I said the $8 brochure. Yeah, it costs $2.46 to print that book. So Whoa, it, how did you do that? It, it actually cost us less to print the book than if we were paying for that brochure. And that's why I was like, stop sending this brochure. Instead, I can mail this entire package for the same amount that you were spending to mail a brochure that wasn't working. And instead, so how do you do it Ta tactically? How do you do it? Um, we used uh, KDP, we used Amazon's self-pub, we self-published the book because my purpose of the book was not to become a bestseller. My purpose was not to like be on the New York Times list. My purpose of that book was to attract the ideal customer for that business. And if that ideal customer read that book, they were in, they loved it. This is what they wanted. And so by doing that, we could use their printing. And so we would print for $2 and 46 cents a cop each of these copies of the books. We had a fulfillment house where we would put together these packages. I think one of them is right here. So like literally, you know, and so inside of that was all these other pieces that we could put in that package that we would send out. And then our fulfillment house would send those out when somebody requested them from our, from all of our marketing efforts. I love it. I think it's amazing. I can totally see it's like a different way of marketing that actually gets attention. Yes. Uh, that's great. So, but and I guess you do physical. need to generate the leads. You do need to generate the people that you are actually reaching out to. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. What are your thoughts about uh, LinkedIn reach, like reaching to uh, leads or to potential leads like that via LinkedIn? I mean, have you seen it work? Yes. Yeah. It did not work in the dental niche because dentists aren't on LinkedIn. So if your if your ideal customer spends their time on LinkedIn, then it's a 100% is an ideal source. See, that takes us to one of the other mistakes that people make, which is going tactic first. Uh, and then trying to fit that in. So they hear like, oh, I hear LinkedIn works, right? And so then let's say it's this dental info company or this dental coaching company I had been working with. They come back and they're like, we have to market on LinkedIn. It's it's totally working, right? And I go, yeah, it works for that business because those people sit on LinkedIn. Dentists sit with their hands in somebody's mouth. They're not on LinkedIn. They're listening to podcasts while they're doing things, right? They're, so you have to understand your customer and look at where they are, and then you go to where they are. And so the mistake people make is starting with the tactic, then trying to make the tactic fit a strategy. And sometimes that strategy fit a goal or principle. And what we do is we look at goal and principle first. So a big one for us, magnetic marketing, is that we want people magnetically attracted to us. And that happens by the direct marketing that we were talking about, by switching everything just a little bit, like that referral, the referral idea we talked about is getting people to ask for your information. Getting somebody to ask me for a copy of the book is now they, one, they're going to read it because they asked for it, as opposed to me pushing it on them in which they put it on their pile and they wait and it sits. And so it's those kind of two different camps with that. So our principle is magnetic marketing. Our strategies then become all these different ways that people could do that. And then tactically we look at is our tactic going to be Facebook ads? Is it going to be LinkedIn ads? Is it going to be YouTube? Is it going to be print? Is it going to be a magazine? Is it going to be TV? All of which we want all of them, but we're not going to do the ones that tactically don't make sense for us. Makes total sense. Total sense. <laughs> Great. Well, Darcy, you know, we talked about a lot of things here. Um, I'm interested in terms of you said that, you know, like the insurance agent or the consulting, you're big in systems. So tell us a little bit about the systems that you set up. So yeah. that all plays for you in when you are not actually involved. <laughs> yeah. So I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of tell you the one story that I did the first time that I was gone because it's the same system. Um, and so I knew I was going to be gone. Um, and, but the funny thing is I wasn't going to be on vacation. I wanted to go to a business like conference. Right. But in the eyes of everybody in the office, I was going to be gone. So I was going to be on vacation. And, uh, so I set the system up. And so what I did is I created three emails that were going to go to our list. So we already had a list, right? So three emails that would go out to our list that would have a special offer, for call it the book, right? So, hey, get your hands on this book. 
And so then they, those emails I scheduled while I was gone, they would click on a link that would take them to an opt-in page where they would request their book and we'd gather all the information we needed. So their name, their mailing address, right? Cause I wanted to physically mail them a copy of this. Um, and then a thank you page. And then there would be follow-up emails and those follow-up emails drove them to a special offer for, in this case, it was to join a membership while I was gone. All of that then was scheduled out because I could systematically say, send this email on Friday, this one on Monday, and this one on Wednesday. And all these things are going to come in while I'm gone. And when I get back to the office the following week, we'll have gotten all these leads. We'll have gotten all of these book orders. And then we'll have gotten all of these special offers that we did. So every system, every marketing system I build starts with a lead capture of some, so something that I can exchange for their information. Then from that, what is my goal? So in the in the consulting coaching business, my goal was to get them to schedule a call. My uh, In another business, it might be to join a membership. It might be to buy a product. Whatever that goal is, everything then goes to that goal. And from there, I move them on to the next step. And from that simple system, that's where I, I build out the other ones. If they don't do what I wanted them to do in system one, I create system two, three, four, five. So that's kind of the big overview of what it is. And it doesn't matter what business I walk into, what business it is, that the system looks the same. Amazing. Amazing. Wow, Darcy, I learned so much during this podcast. So thank you for being a guest here. It's amazing. Now, if our listeners would like to get a hold of you, how can they do that? Uh, can I Can I offer them a copy of the book? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So the best place to start really is by reading this book and you can get a free copy of that book. We've, we've bought the book. We just ask if you'll help us with the shipping and handling, and you can get that at the direct marketing book.com the direct marketing book.com. Um, and also with it, I put, um, a handful of bonus. If you want to look at what an offer looks like, you want to go through the process of what we've been talking about. You'll see it all happening if you go through that, but there's some additional trainings and stuff to really kind of help you understand how to develop these things for your business. Amazing. Amazing. And we're of course going to add the link in the no in the, in our, um, you know, podcast uh, page. Great. Well, Darcy, thank you so much again for being a guest. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. Absolutely. Thanks for listening to the System Simplified podcast. We'll see you again next time and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.